In the Hitman games, your objective is simple. Eliminate your target and escape. So, could you just stab your target right at the start of the mission and then run straight for the exit? Well, you could try, but you would immediately be shot to death by dozens of security guards. So, how about following your target and waiting until there are no guards nearby? Well, the developers of the game won't let you get away with murder that easily. Your target is almost always accompanied by at least one personal bodyguard. This means that if you want to eliminate your target, it's necessary to neutralize their bodyguard, or find a way to separate your target from their guard. Yandere Simulator takes place in a peaceful school, with no security guards and no guns. So, what exactly is stopping you from simply running up to your rival and stabbing her right at the start of the day? Well, in the case of Osana, the answer is... What are you doing? Stop! You won't get away with this! This girl. Her name is Raibaru. You may recognize her as the antagonist of the Indestructible Rival videos. This girl is the mysterious obstacle that I first mentioned back in 2017. But who exactly is she, and what role does she play in Yandere Simulator? I'll start by explaining what purposes she serves from a game design perspective. Every morning after Osana has spoken to Senpai, she will speak with Raibaru. During these conversations, Osana might mention what she plans to do later in the day. By eavesdropping on these conversations, the player can learn when and where Osana is going to be vulnerable. Sometimes there will be scripted events, where Raibaru asks Osana about her interests. These events will provide the player with information that is very useful for making Osana fall in love with another student using the matchmaking minigame. Additionally, Osana will speak to Raibaru about her personal problems. By eavesdropping on these conversations, the player can learn crucial information that is necessary for befriending Osana, which will make her vulnerable to certain elimination methods. There will also be scripted events between Raibaru and Osana that may provide the player with an opportunity to eliminate Osana without bloodshed. For example, Raibaru might ask Osana to open a box with a box cutter, which could provide the player with a potential murder weapon that has Osana's fingerprints on it. Most importantly, Raibaru spends all of her time with Osana, which prevents the player from being able to eliminate Osana without a witness. And not only that, but if Raibaru sees Osana being attacked, she will immediately apprehend the attacker. This means that Raibaru essentially serves the same function as a personal bodyguard from Hitman. So what would happen if the player attacked Raibaru? Directly attacking Raibaru would be a big mistake. She can sense danger, she has lightning-fast reflexes, and she is strong enough to physically overpower Yandere-chan, even if you raise your strength as far as possible. Not even a stealth attack from behind is enough to take down Raibaru. So, instead of attacking her, how about separating Raibaru and Osana? One way to separate a student from a crowd is to talk with them, which causes them to stand still while everyone else moves on ahead. However, this strategy won't work for Raibaru. She thinks it would be rude to ignore a friend, so she will refuse to speak with Yandere-chan while she's spending time with Osana. Trying to distract her with a giggle or a radio won't work. She ignores all audible distractions while she's hanging out with Osana. 
and you won't be able to send a student to distract her either. The other students are fully aware of how strong Raiburu is, and they don't want to risk getting on her bad side, so they won't agree to distract her on your behalf. Let's review. Raiburu cannot be killed with a direct attack, she is immune to distractions, and she will break your bones if she sees you attack Osana. It might sound like she's ridiculously overpowered, but a character like this is actually necessary to balance the gameplay. Yandere Simulator doesn't have dozens of security guards armed with guns to keep the player in check, so I need to compensate by including a character who is just as much of a threat as a team of bodyguards. I don't want the player to be able to eliminate any rival with a straightforward brain-dead strategy. I want the player to have to think, strategize, and solve problems in order to make a rival become vulnerable. Some rivals will be accompanied by characters who serve the same function as a team of bodyguards, and other rivals will have completely different circumstances that will prevent the player from killing them too quickly or too easily. Usually, whenever I make a video to introduce a new feature, I explain absolutely every aspect of that feature. So, you're probably waiting for me to explain how to defeat Raibaru. But I'm not going to. I want you to figure it out for yourself. I want it to be a challenge for you, so I'm not going to give you any hints. This is one puzzle you have to solve on your own. Of course, I couldn't put such a significant character into the game without coming up with a backstory for her. Ideally, the player would learn Raiburu's backstory through scripted events and conversations in the game itself. But this would require additional animations and voice acting that would further extend the game's development. So instead, I'll simply tell you Raiburu's backstory here, in this video. Let's begin. Exactly one year before Yandere Simulator takes place, Raiburu was the president of the Martial Arts Club. She was a very good teacher and taught many students self-defense, even if they weren't actually members of the club. This explains why some of the students in the final game will have self-defense skills, even though they're not members of the martial arts club. Many students underestimated Raiburu due to her cute and girly appearance. A lot of students challenged her to duels, believing that they could easily defeat her, but she never lost a single match. She was very proud of her 100% win streak, it earned her the nickname of the Indestructible Rival. Raibaru's star pupil was Budo. Budo learned many things from his sensei, Raibaru, and held an immense amount of respect for her. At the end of the semester, Budo unexpectedly challenged Raibaru to a duel. She accepted his challenge, and to everyone's surprise, Budo defeated Raibaru shattering the 100% win streak that she had worked so hard to maintain. However, Raibaru was not angry when she was defeated. She was relieved. For a long time, she had wanted to stop practicing martial arts and pick up another hobby, but she felt obligated to keep practicing martial arts just because of her win streak. Now that her streak was broken and one of her own students had surpassed her, she felt like it was finally okay to quit martial arts. Raibaru resigned as the club's president and promoted Budo to the position of club leader. All of her pupils were very sad to see her go, but they respected her decision and accepted Budo as their new club president. After the school semester ended, Raibaru made a new friend, Osana Najimi. They spent a lot of time with one another and quickly became the best of friends. In fact, the two of them grew so close that they even started to wear matching accessories. At the point in time when Yandere Simulator takes place, 
it's extremely rare to see Osana without Raibaru at her side. The two of them have become almost inseparable. Even though she's not participating in the martial arts club anymore, Raibaru is still at peak physical condition and is more than capable of breaking bones in order to protect herself or her friends. This means that the safest place in school is at Raibaru's side. For a long time, I deliberately put Osana at the bottom of my priority list because I felt it was more important to finish implementing every feature I thought the game required in order to be fun. In June, I finally felt as though I had implemented enough features to justify returning to Osana. So that's exactly what I did. I'm finally working on Osana again. It feels... good. Kinda like an ancient prophecy has finally come true, or something like that. I'm thrilled to be at this stage of the game's development, and I hope you are too. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator.